Hey there guys, welcome to Dino's Vault once again. Finally, your biker brother with all the best wishes from you guys is yet again the first to get his hands on the all new 2017 laser edged Pulsar 200 NS. So here comes my first ride impression. The 200 NS wherein NS stands for Naked Sport was an amazing street fighter built based on the engine derived from the Duke 200. Now while the Duke 200 was purely about outright performance and brute force, the 200 NS was more kind of a performance bike built for Indian conditions with a not so rigid suspension setup and comfortable seating without compromising on power and performance. Also, the more accessible pricing made it an instant hit with the enthusiasts. However, with the Pulsar 220 consistently outselling the 200 NS, Bajaj thought that the audience weren't ready to embrace the 200 NS yet and had to pull it out of the market. Now, I firmly believe that people only realize the value of certain things when they are gone rather than realizing their worth when they are actually around us. Now this holds true to a great degree in case of the 200 NS because the moment the bike went into hibernation mode here in our Indian market, people started missing it really badly. So much so that I was told by the showroom guys that they kept receiving hundreds of queries all along until now for this bike. Well now Bajaj has answered all our prayers and brought out the people's champion back in action and believe me in this red and grey attire the bike looks so drop dead gorgeous that you'll fall for it almost instantly with your very first glance. Ok now let's get down to business and find out what we actually get this time around. First of all the bike is a carbureted variant and not the FI variant that was showcased in Turkey. There is no official word from the company as to whether we would be getting optional ABS with this bike. Hence the question of having single channel ABS or dual channel ABS would be secondary. The bike I am featuring today is the non ABS variant. Secondly, I am hoping that the bike now gets the BS4 compliant engine although we need to wait for the official reveal. Now I believe this bike gets a BS4 engine because Bajaj had recently claimed on their Facebook page that they are India's first two wheeler company to be 100% BS4 compliant now. Thirdly come the visually apparent striking new paint schemes and body graphics that truly look stunning. The 200 font on the tank cowl reminds me of the Yamaha MT-09 but it sure does look super cool. The bike now also gets an engine cowl that looks neatly laid out and goes well with the rest of the design of the bike. Fourthly the bike now comes with AHO or always headlamp on function which means the headlight turns on the moment we start the bike. We do however get a control switch to switch between high beam and low beam. And finally another good thing is that the bike now comes with a center stand as you can see here. The bike comes with MRF Nylo Grip Zapper tires and we get 17 inch wheels with tubeless tires and we get a 100 by 80 tire up front and a 130 by 70 tire at the back. Please note that I am yet to receive the official tech specs so I will be just sharing my first ride impression in this video. I will update all the relevant specs in the description portion as well as in the comment section once I receive the info from the company. Looking at the brakes, since the Duke 200 currently gets a 300mm front disc, I believe this bike also gets a 300mm front disc going by the size of it. Again let's not jump into conclusions and instead wait for the official specs to be released. One thing that's pretty much apparent though are the pedal discs that this bike gets at both ends which eventually aid in better heat dissipation thereby enhancing the overall braking performance. Also the suspension remains the same with the telescopic forks with anti-friction bush up front and a gas charged nitrox monoshock at the back. The bike continues to feature the triple spark 4 valve engine which per Bajaj offers better fuel economy and also better performance. Now looking at the design, the Honda CB1000 inspired headlamp design of the Pulsar 200 NS instantly won hearts across our nation back when it was launched. The bike looks modern, sporty and offers great road presence which is what Pulsar bikes are known for. Coming to the profile, we get the trademark muscular fuel tank that holds true to the Pulsar franchise and undoubtedly lends the bike a macho street fighter kind of a look. The newly added engine cowl perfectly falls into place in this already super sexy design. The tail section is sharper and lifted up to give the bike a sleeker look which is typically that of a modern street naked bike. We continue to get the underbelly exhaust which aids in the bike's mass centralization concept and has great water wading capabilities too. At the back we get the same twin LED strips for the tail lamp setup that look gorgeous when they light up. I also love the way they've mixed up the glossy finished red paint with the matte finished grey paint because the colors blend really well and ultimately now the bike is very much visually pleasing to the onlooker than before. 
We also continue to get the split seat layout with this bike. The seats were comfortable earlier and they continue to be nice and comfy now as well. We also get the neatly laid out tank pad which is of very good quality. The clip-on handlebars are well positioned and these along with the slightly rare set rider foot pegs give us a nice and upright seating posture. The switches are backlit as usual and we do get the high beam flasher along with an engine kill switch. We don't get the light switch though. The instrument cluster remains the same but this time around we get the blue backlit display as opposed to the yellow one we used to get earlier. We get an analog tachometer and the digital readouts include the speedometer, odometer, trip meters, side stand indicator, fuel gauge and a clock. Now looking at the engine specs, again since there is no official info yet from the company, I cannot confirm anything as of now. The older model used to put out 23.52 PS of max power and 18.3 newton meters of max torque. And since this new model also gets the same triple spark 4 valve DTSI engine, I think the power figures would remain pretty much the same. But anyway, let's wait for the official reveal. Now coming to the most important part of this video which is my first ride impression. I did take the bike out for a short spin. The ride included city streets and just a couple of empty stretches so I couldn't push the bike all the way. Anyway first of all what delighted me the most is the super refined engine. Trust me you almost wonder whether the engine is on when the bike is idling. Now that's the kind of refinement this engine has on offer now. This I believe would be welcomed by open arms by all Pulsar maniacs out there because the previous 200 NS was nowhere close to being as refined as this bike is. Secondly, the bike starts at the very gentle tap of the push button starter now. You no longer have to sustain pushing that electric starter button to start the bike so that's great as well. Also the clutch feels super light now when compared to that of the preceding model. The gear shifts are butter smooth now and please note that you need to pull the clutch lever completely for smoother gear shifts. The mistake some riders commit is that they don't pull the clutch lever completely and complain that the gearbox is hard. So please try pulling in the clutch lever completely while shifting gears and I'm sure the gear shifts will be a lot smoother then. Also the throttle action now is light and crisp and the acceleration is nice and linear and smooth giving you adequate thrust when needed for those quick overtakes. The seats along with the perfectly positioned clip-on handlebars and the ideally set rider foot pegs offer a nice and comfortable seating posture. Now, this is further aided by the perfectly sprung suspension which offers the ideal blend of performance and comfort. Offering a plush ride quality is the area where the 200NS scored well and truly over the Duke 200 earlier and things have become even better with this new model now as far as ride quality is concerned. The perimeter frame combined with the box section swing arm offer superb handling characteristics. Thankfully we continue to get MRF zappers this time around too and these offer great road grip. Please don't be disappointed that I am unable to give you the exact spec details. I will be doing another comparo video of this bike with its arch rival the RTR 200 once the official specs are out. So I will be disclosing all the relevant info in that video. This video is basically about my first ride impression as to how the bike feels to ride and since hundreds of you kept writing to me to review this bike as soon as possible, I have done this video and I hope you enjoyed watching this. I don't want to confuse you further by giving you old specs or mentioning other various speculations that are doing the rounds all over the web. So my conclusion is that the bike is a winner in terms of offering better refinement, lighter clutch feel, smoother gear shifts, smoother acceleration, better comfort and to top it all off we get the super sexy new looks. If only Bajaj choose to offer at least optional dual channel ABS with this bike then I think they'll pretty much completely seal the deal here. Now mileage wise I think one can expect something close to 40 kmpl from this bike under mixed riding conditions because that's what my cousin used to get from his 200 NS. Price ex showroom Hyderabad for this new laser edged Pulsar 200 NS 2017 model non ABS variant is just around 98,000 rupees which I believe is very competitive pricing in the 200cc segment. Well that's pretty much it for now I just hope you found this video useful until next time this is Dino saying ciao take care god bless and ride safe